welcome to the best cap cut masterclass. Today we have some exciting things to do. Let's continue from where we left off. I've already placed the YouTube logo on our timeline. However, we still need to animate it. First, when I select the logo, notice that we now have more options in the right menu. These are clip properties that allow you to manipulate the selected clip. For instance, let's try experimenting with the blend option. When you click on the drop down tab, there are many modes you can choose from. These modes determine how the overlying layer blends with the main layer. For logos, I usually keep this setting on default. There's also an opacity slider that we can adjust to control how visible or transparent the selected clip should be. Just below that setting, CapCut provides an option to reduce image noise, which helps to smooth out noisy images. Let's play back our video so we can decide what to change. Soccer YouTube. As you can see, the logo appears in a rather boring way. Let's make it more engaging. Select the logo, go to the right-hand menu, and click on animation. Under animation, you'll see three options. Let's start with an animation. This determines how the logo will appear in the video. Let's try a few options so you can get an idea. As you can see, an animation controls the transition of the image or graphics as they appear. Next is out animation which determines how the image will exit the video. Let's test it out. First, let me increase the length of the layer so we can see the effect. Now it looks much better. You can also control the duration of the animations. Last but not least is the combo animation. This keeps your clip in motion throughout, and there are some cool animations I want you to try. I'll settle on one particular animation. YouTube, or even software like since CapCut has been mentioned, let's add the CapCut logo to the timeline and adjust its length to match the video. We'll make it a little smaller and position it on the right side of the video. Select the logo, go to the right-hand menu, click on Animation, and then select Combo. The animation for this one is straightforward. I love using one of the 3D cube animations because it makes my videos look more professional. Let me increase the length and adjust the animation duration. Now let's watch what we've created. Software like CapCut, you It looks great, but I'll adjust the logo to appear precisely when CapCut is mentioned, neither before nor after. Perfect. Let's rewatch the clip to decide what to do next. To master anything in life, whether it's a school subject, soccer, YouTube, or even software like CapCut, you need to put in the work. Practice and continuous learning are what will set you apart from others. The video is good, but it's time to make it better. Since we only have rough cuts between clips, let's add transitions to make our video more interesting to watch. To get started, hover to the top and click on Transitions. Right off the bat, I'm in the tab with my favorite transitions. Just like I explained in the first video, in order to mark your favorite settings, such as transitions, stickers, or effects, Make sure your email is connected to CapCut. And no, you don't need the pro version of CapCut to link your email. By simply scrolling down with your mouse, you'll be able to see different categories of transitions. You can even see the category names at the top, but there's a faster way to navigate. Just click on the small box labeled Transitions. From here, you can see how well the transitions are organized. Let's go through some of them while I give you tips on using them. To use any transition for the first time, click on the transition you want, and it'll take a few seconds to download. When using transitions, don't just drag and drop anything onto your clip. First, decide the mood of your video and use transitions accordingly. If you're making kids stories, it makes more sense to use colorful or kid-friendly transitions. For this video, let's first go to my favorite transitions, where I'll probably find something useful. By simply hovering over any transition, you'll be able to preview how it will look in your video. We'd like to add a transition between the first and second clip. To apply a transition, click on the small blue plus button, and you'll see a small box between the two clips indicating that a transition has been added. Whether it's a school... When you find a transition you like, it's always best to mark it as a favorite, so you won't have to search for it next time. To do that, click on the small star next to the plus button. Once it turns yellow, the transition will be saved in the favorites folder. The second method, which I use to add transitions to my clips, 
is simply dragging and dropping the transition between clips. Soccer, you Whenever you select a transition on the timeline, a menu will appear on the right panel, allowing you to adjust the duration slider. Notice how the transition box increases and decreases in length as I move the slider. In simple terms, you'll be able to control how fast or slow the transition will last. When the duration is short, the transition will be Whether very quick, like a flash. When you increase the duration, the animation of the transition becomes much clearer. Whether it's a school subject, soccer, you Let's proceed with our video editing. Since there's an animated logo on the fourth clip, I don't think it's necessary to add a transition. The logo itself creates a transition. The other clips look better without any transitions. Let me add a transition between the last two clips. I'll use a shutter transition because I have a cool idea in mind for how I'm going to mix it with a sound effect. We're done adding transitions to this video, but I'm still going to create a tutorial focusing on dynamic transitions only. To master anything in life, whether it's a school subject, soccer, YouTube, or even software like CapCut, you need to put in the work. Practice and continuous learning are what will set you apart from others. To make our transitions feel more alive, we'll add sound design in our next masterclass lesson. Right now, there's another way we can visually enhance this video by adding captions. Hover to the top and click on captions. On the left menu, we have a few options. Auto captions, which we'll be using, as well as other settings like caption templates that we'll use later. There's also auto lyrics, and under that, there's add captions in case you want to import captions in a cap cut. Let's focus on auto captions. Under spoken language, you can either let CapCut auto-detect the language, which it's very good at, or you can manually pick the language of the video to make things easier. Next, click on Generate. This will take a few seconds, depending on the length of your video. The captions are already generated. Let's preview them. To master anything in life, whether it's a school subject, soccer, YouTube, or even software like CapCut, you need to put in the work. Practice and continuous learning are what will set you apart from others. The transcription is perfect, but the style is very simple and boring. Let's add some animation to match the overall mood of our video. First, select one of the captions and go to the left menu. When the Apply All setting is on, any change you make, such as color or size, will be applied to all the captions. If I turn off the Apply All setting and choose a template, only the selected caption will be changed. But when the setting is on, any change I make will apply to the rest of the video. The template library has a lot of cool pre-animated captions, so you'll need to go through them one by one to find the best one for you. Whenever you click on a template for the first time, it needs to be downloaded before it can be applied to your captions. I like downloading all the captions first before going through them to determine which one will work best for my video. Now let's try a few good ones before I show you something very important. Master anything in life, master anything in life, whether it's a school subject, soccer, YouTube. I settled on the glowing captions. Although they're not very visible on some of the clips, I'll show you a clever way of fixing that. Next, let's customize our captions by clicking on the basic tab. The first thing we'll do is choose our font. CapCut already has a lot of cool fonts, but I always like using this bold font that's installed on my system. Next, adjust the size of the font. For more tutorials on customizing text, I'll link a video in the description so you can master all the settings under the text tab. Let's focus on the caption tab. Click on it. This is where I want to edit my captions. As you can see, some captions are two lines. Personally, I don't like that. It's not aesthetically pleasing. So. What we're going to do is break the captions into two or three words. Let's start from the beginning. To divide the words, simply click once where you want to divide them and press the enter key on your keyboard. In this section, you can even correct or add some words. Let's do that for the rest of the captions. Now let's preview our progress. To master anything in life, whether it's a school subject, Soccer, YouTube, or even software like CapCut, you need to put in the work. Practice and continuous learning are what will set you apart from others. If you notice that a word is delayed in appearing, you can drag the particular caption on top and move it a little bit back so it aligns with the pace of the voice. 
Now it looks much better. Something clever I like doing to make my captions pop is importing a dark PNG gradient image and placing it right under the captions, then masking it for a smooth appearance. By the way, I'll teach you how to use the masking feature in detail very soon. To master anything in life, whether it's a school subject, soccer, YouTube, or even software like CapCut, you need to put in the work. Practice and continuous learning are what will set you apart from others. The video looks much better now, even though there are some inconsistencies with the pre-made animations. See you all in the fourth lesson.